What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Hapri record, The Concrete Confessional, out this past Friday, May 13th. Hatebreed is an interesting band to review because they make a specific type of music that serves specific purposes in the lives of their listeners. This is music for catharsis, music for motivation, music for lifting, and a majority of the time, it's the soundtrack to these things for fans. For that reason, they're a band that's pretty easy to make a quick snap decision on. If you're, if you're like me and you're the right demographic, you're going to be instantly drawn to their ridiculously intense live shows and their unwavering commitment to this particular style, this kind of like thrash metal meets hardcore, kind of like if Agnostic Front, Sick of It All, Slayer, and Exodus had like a foursome. Otherwise, if you're not the right demo, you'll likely be indifferent, or if you're not really a fan of heavy music at all, you'll actively dislike it. And it's because Hatebreed occupies this particular lane that they'll never be a, a critics band like a Macedon or a Gorguts or a Gojira. All that being said though, I'm personally going into this seventh record, The Conquer Confessional, as a fan, as one of the converted. For reasons that I'm sure any Hatebreed fans watching this understand, this is one of my personal favorite bands. Now this record follows up 2013's The Divinity of Purpose, which may just be my personal favorite Hatebreed record to date. You can see some extended thoughts on that here. I talked about it at the year end of 2013 when I kind of wrapped up my favorite albums of that year. But overall, just to kind of sum that record up, to me, it found the band a little more metaled up. It was definitely a massive improvement over 2009's self-titled record, which, while it had a couple anthems on it, it just, it just felt stale, and it didn't sonically pack the same punch as the rest of their albums. But I'll fully admit that even though I may have a soft spot for the Divinity of Purpose, it's Perseverance, their second record, that's really the key installment in their discography because it's a milestone for hardcore and it's an early milestone for the new wave of American heavy metal. But overall, what we're looking at here with album number seven is a band attempting to follow up six albums in a row that have been uncompromising stylistically and to their fans pretty consistent. So it's of course fans hope that this new record, The Concrete Confessional, is able to add to this band's impressive 20-year legacy. So our first taste of The Concrete Confessional was the opening track and first single, A.D., which is a track that just floored me because it was this lyrical change of pace from kind of the standard uplifting, motivational, hate-breed anthem towards some pretty ruthless social commentary. I remember immediately after hearing this, tweeting out about like the bridge lyrics on here, thoughts and prayers again, is that what it'll take? Which industries profit while lives are at stake? Lyrics that are apparently inspired by the Paris shootings. You know, heavy music can be such a powerful platform for honest feelings about the state of the world and especially negative things that pertain to the state of the world. And I feel like on this track and on a bunch of the rest of the record, Jamie Josta takes full advantage of this as a lyricist. Lyrically, a lot of the divinity of purpose had like this bright, infectious optimism to it, which maybe was great for that record. But one of the Concrete Confessional's strongest assets is this kind of gear shift into some pretty negative, but very raw and real, direct, in-your-face lyrics. And it serves to really muscle up the band's sound, and you kind of take the music more seriously. In addition to AD, the track Remember When has maybe some of my favorite lyrics on here. It kind of advocates for this rejection of the idea of regret as a whole, basically saying that you shouldn't live your life lamenting your past mistakes and looking through the rearview mirror because it's a toxic way to live. That line, I let the weak lament in the chorus, and just not only the line, but the, the way Jamie Justin delivers it with just this snarl is really what drives this track home for me. Seven Enemies is another one that hits particularly head on. Jamie Josta vents his frustration with those selfish and egocentric people who always expect your sympathy for whatever fucked up shit is going on in their life, but when you need them, they're nowhere to be found. And let's, let's be honest, we all fucking know a person or ten like this. 
And to be clear, this is just my interpretation of the lyrics. This is just what I am pulling from these words. But either way, the words result in probably the most memorable hook on the whole record. From Grace We've Fallen is another lyrical highlight, but kind of for a different reason, because it takes a little bit more of an abstract approach versus kind of the directness of the two tracks I just discussed. It's like, I'm not really even sure what this song is talking about, but you have lines like, Halos replaced by crimson thorns, and saints now wear their bloody crowns. These are the type of lyrics that may not jump out at you right away on the first couple listens to the record, but then you read along and you're just like, fuck, that is awesome. The Closer, Serve Your Masters is another one that's just plain badass and really worth reading along to. I gotta say that the lyrics as a whole on the Concrete Confessional are definitely the most notable jump in quality from past releases. Quite frankly, I really don't know where some of it came from. Jamie Jossa wrote some truly next level shit on here. The lyrics are darker, they're more hard-hitting, and in some cases they're more poetic. Now musically, Hatebreed embraces a bit of a duality here in that a good chunk of these songs have that dominant metal influence that has been on a lot of their more recent material, yet a bunch of these tracks are pure hardcore tracks that really bring Perseverance and even their first record to mind. And this kind of balance makes it so this is possibly their most diverse album to date, which whatever that means for a Hatebreed album, but still. I mean, a track like Seven Enemies is just a two-minute hardcore song with nothing but breakdowns, and for me at least, it immediately brought Satisfaction is the Death of Desire to mind. Then you got a song like Us Against Us, which is really punky and kind of foregoes riffs almost altogether. Then you got Metal Tins tracks like From Grace We've Fallen, which reeks of Testament's modern output. And then looking down the barrel of today, which is some very familiar Slayer worship at this point. So the question really is, where does this balance leave us in terms of quality? If you ask me, and you are because you're watching my fucking review, The Concrete Confessional is an overall great record that's about a quarter filler. But let's talk positive first. First off, I can say with absolute certainty that we have a new Hatebreed classic on our hands with the track Something's Off. If you listen to this track and you don't think that it is far and away the best on the track list, I'm, I'm not sure we're listening to the same record. That groove in the intro and the chorus is just perfection. And the gang vocal refrain is, is the catchiest on the whole album. Ironically, what really sends the song home for me is that semi-melodic singing that Jamie Jossa does in the song's bridge, which, I mean, I know Hatebreed fans are very touchy, to say the least, when it comes to injecting melody into their music, but this is a case where a little bit of melody makes the fucking song. I, I swear to God, this better be a single. This is a knockout, perfect Hatebreed song. I've already touched on why AD and Seven Enemies are two of my favorites. Remember When is another stellar track that, in addition to being awesome lyrically, just brings this killer chorus that brings a real Perseverance vibe, for sure. And I guess we'll, we'll have to forgive that completely unnecessary, boring, minute-long breakdown that closed the song out, because it still isn't enough to take away from it just being an excellent track. If you're looking for just a quintessential, familiar, standard-type Hatebreed song, Dissonance is going to fit like a glove, and it's followed by one of my other favorites, Serve Your Masters, which just closes this album out so well. That stomping opening groove and that snarling guitar riff in the chorus just gelled together brilliantly. And then, you know, from Grace We've Fallen and Looking Down the Barrel of Today are great examples of when Hatebreed can just sound like basically a full-on metal band. I should also mention that the production on this album is the best production on a Hatebreed album to date even though it's still Zeus behind the boards, as he has been for the last several releases. But the mix is phenomenal. The bass drums aren't as annoyingly clicky as they were on the Divinity of Purpose, and they're a little more muscular. And there's enough bottom end here, despite like the scooped, typical metal rhythm guitars. But this thing is not without its flaws, unfortunately. There's several tracks that just whiz by without a trace of memorability. There's a bunch of music on here that's it's got a lot of aggression, but very little in the way of staying power. 
I'm talking about tracks like the Apex Within and Us Against Us. Those cheesy whoa oh vocals on the Apex Within just totally knock the wind out of the song's entrance. And Us Against Us is just kind of like, just kind of pecks at you without ever latching on. And it's got this complete snooze fest of a breakdown. There's also tracks like Slaughtered in Their Dreams and Walking the Knife, which while they're not bad, they don't add anything to the album that's not already there and as a result kind of weigh the second half of the album down. To be fair though, when you're making music with this type of specific formula and specific sound, it is really difficult to make an album that is completely engaging from start to finish. Still, for Hatebreed fans, there's a lot on here to like and several tracks on here to really fucking love. I'm really hoping to see at least four of these tracks in the setlist when I see them on tour with Devil Driver. This album may have a bunch of filler, but it more than justifies its space in the band's discography. The Concrete Confessional gets a 7 out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.